wait a minute, where's zero? Why isn't he showing up? This bug made me so angry. I want to scream right now. <laughs> Hello, everyone, mates. Today I have a serious video for you. Welcome to devlog number three of Project E. We're making more melee attacks today. So if you watched my previous devlog, you probably remembered how I struggled to implement a simple three-hit combo system. And it's about time we struggle again. This time with different kinds of attacks. But wait a minute. Let me call what Zero for this operation. And would you look at that? Right away, we are greeted with a bug that we should fix. But no worries, you know why? Because that's what a tactical programmer does, am I right? There are actually two bugs here. The first being that he performs a grounded attack in the air. And the second being that he can still move while attacking. That shouldn't happen. Taking care of the first bug is easy. Only make him attack while he's grounded. See? Simple. Simple in theory, that is. When I was trying to fix this bug, there wasn't only one line of code that I needed to fix. There were many, and fixing it that way just felt kind of wrong. So I decided to scrap everything I had fixed and try a different approach, which is using finite state machines. I learned about this in my first year of university, and <laughs> I used to be one of the best. So I started researching about their implementation in game development. I learned a lot. Then I decided it was time to actually implement it. So I searched for some tutorials. There were a couple of interesting ones. I watched some of them, but most of them just didn't suit my game's architecture. But this one, this one looked promising. I watched it a bit and realized that this is probably the best tutorial I could ask for regarding my game's architecture. And I decided I would follow it. But then I decided to check how long the video was. And I was like, <coughs> And in one day, I was able to get the finite state machine working properly. No bugs whatsoever. Yet. After creating the finite state machine, I was able to fix those first bugs. That means no more moving while attacking and no more grounded attacks in the air. But a wise man once said, when you fix a bug, another one will take its place. And lo and behold, another bug had risen from the catacombs. But since I already had a working finite state machine, this bug was easy to fix. But little did I know, it would bring forth one of the strongest bugs I had ever encountered. And before I tell you what the bug is, there's something you should know about finite state machines. There are two types of finite state machines, deterministic and non-deterministic finite state machines. The main difference between these two is that deterministic finite state machines can only be in one state at a time. Non-deterministic finite state machines can be in multiple states at a time. And if it wasn't obvious already, in my game, I'm using a deterministic finite state machine. Now, explain to me, why is he running two states at once? I'm gonna be honest. When I got this bug, I wasn't quite sure how to go about fixing it. This bug was messing with me for a couple of days now, but eventually, I found out what the problem was. And when I did, I felt kind of stupid. I can't remember what I was thinking about, but something told me to remove zero number two over here. And so I did. And when I playtested, the problem was gone. So you're telling me, this whole time, I was trying to fix a bug, there wasn't even a bug? That's right. The other state that I was running was on zero number two. Why didn't I think of that? This bug made me so angry. I want to scream right now. <laughs> when I fixed this bug, I wanted to grab zero number two from his neck and break all of his bones. Okay, okay, enough. I'm calm. I'm calm. Calm. So, with the major bugs out of the way, yes, there are more. It was finally time to actually start creating the attacks. First, I started with the light attacks. More specifically, the crouching light attack. No, it wasn't easy. It took me a while, especially because it was something new to me. So I had to come up with a step-by-step -step process on how I can create these kinds of attacks. Then came the forward light attack. It followed the same steps we had established before. Look at this distinguished gentleman. Yeah, yeah not much to say about this one. It's pretty straightforward. Aww. Next up was a grounded up light attack. Here it is. Yes, this is the correct video. The sprites I had been using up until now didn't contain any kind of attack that I would consider an up light attack. So I'll be using this animation for now. And that's it for the light attacks. Next up are the heavy attacks. These are the kind of attacks you'll see in game and you'll be like, Ooh. first up was a neutral heavy attack. And look, I have footage of the process this time. One thing you should know about heavy attacks is that they're going to have something called attack properties. For example, an up heavy attack 
might launch the player up into the air. A forward heavy attack can knock an opponent forward. You get the point. But we're not doing that yet. We need more attacks. Up next is the grounded down heavy attack. Uh, also don't have much to say about this one. It's just kinda heavy on the ground. Okay, I'll stop. Around this time, I was starting to get bored, so I decided to make an intro animation for Zero. Did I need to do this? No. Why did I do it? Because I wanted to. And that's all that matters. Anyway, back to the attack. The next attack is the forward heavy attack. And as you can probably tell, this is the first attack that changes the character's position. But there's a problem. If we change the character's position directly, he will just teleport back to where he was before. To fix this, I needed a little bit of code and I needed to place the character inside of an empty game object. If you don't know what an empty game object is, think of it as an empty box. For example, let's say there's a cucaracha in your house. Right now, it's inside this big space called your house. But if you place it inside of a box, you'll feel relieved because you know he's inside the box. Did you get that analogy? Me neither. Anyway, I came to the conclusion that I needed to redo my animations with the character inside of the empty game object. So I spent a whole hour just redoing the animations. Yes, one whole hour. Luckily, all I had to do was just copy the values. This made it much easier. And when I tested the game... Wait a minute. Where's Zero? Why isn't he showing up? Did I break something? Yes, yeah, so apparently I had forgotten to place a component on the player. The component that gives him gravity. You know, gravity. Right? Right? Now, I was finally able to create the forward heavy attack animation. And, it's looking kinda lit, if you ask me. But then, the animation started getting kinda weird. More specifically, the hurt animation. Whenever the player takes damage, he would just get stuck in the animation. But, I was able to fix this quickly. All I had to do was just tweak some things in the animation system. And around this time, I decided to take a step back from developing my game to take a more in-depth look at the game design. Just to think about what system the game will have, how every system will interact. Uh, creating this game design document has been in my to-do list for quite a long time as well. And it's about time I write it. And after about three weeks of researching, brainstorming, modeling and improving the game ideas that I had, I finally finished the game design document. Okay, most of it. At least now, it was in a state that can help me understand what I need to develop next. And then I decided to get back into game development, and there's one less attack that we need to create. That's right, it's the grounded up heavy attack. And after creating it, I have to say that this is probably one of my favorite ones right now. But then, I discovered another problem. This one wasn't necessarily a bug, but it was still a problem. You see, most modern fighting games run at 60 frames per second. So, since the game runs in frames, so do the attacks. Let's take Tekken 7 for example. My favorite character is Armor King. My brother's is King. And they both have this punch right here. And it has 10 frames. Which means the attack will hit the opponent 10 frames after I press the button. The attack gets registered exactly on the 10th frame. Now, the problem with my game is that the hits don't register on the exact frame that they get in contact with the other player. They only register on the next frame. That shouldn't happen, so we need to fix this. You know why? Because that's what a technical programmer does, am I right? <laughs> and after enough research, I found out what the problem was. And it had to do with the way I was checking for my collisions. So I changed it, and now the attacks register on the exact frame that they get in contact with the other player. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you want to learn more about Project E's mechanics, check out my first devlog. There's also a link in the description. Make sure to like this video if I made you laugh. Did you laugh? Teacher? Also, if you have already subscribed to my channel, have this chuckle me. And I'll see you guys next time. As always, stay awesome. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention was about the tutorials. The tutorials are working. The tutorials are on their way. Just stay calm. Calm. Chicken tonight, everybody will be eating all the chicken tonight. Everybody will be eating all the chicken tonight.
eating all the chicken tonight. Everybody will be eating all the chicken tonight. Everybody will be eating all the chicken tonight. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe. Everybody will be eating all the chicken tonight.